Hey guys, it's Saturday, 5.14 p.m. on June 16th, 2018, and I want to share my thoughts with you about this particular channel by a guy named Jim Lee. Um, he used to have a channel called Resonator, and he runs this webpage here called climateviewer.com or .org. Either one will take you to the same thing. And I want to share with you some of my experience over the course of the last couple of years and the my consideration for what goes into me either referring a channel to you guys or to not refer a channel to you guys. And usually I don't refer channels to you guys, and there's a very good reason for that. And the reason is, is that from my perspective, if I'm not giving you guys something that I can measure and prove to you what I'm saying, then it's absolutely worthless for me to do that. And I don't know all the content that all these different channels that I like or I don't like I, I have no way of vetting everything they have to say. Okay, so that's why that's one of the reasons why I stick with just biblical stuff is because I can I I personally am convinced to the point that I would actually die for my convictions, and I believe 100% that the Bible is the inspired word of God. So I can crack that book open and I can point to you guys where the information I want to share with you is in the Bible. But when we get outside of the Bible, when we start talking about things like man-made weather. Um, all I can do is, is look on CNN and see what they're reporting there. And then, as I did in my videos last summer, compare what I'm seeing on CNN to the ground wind speed indicators, to the radar that's at the airports, and to the buoys that we have in the water, and compare the data that we're getting from those that, that objective data to the narrative that we're getting on the news. And I can compare the two to show you guys that there, if there's a discrepancy, which I did show you in many... Uh, videos last summer to say, hey, wait a minute, the things that the news is claiming about these storms is not consistent with the observable metrics, objective truth that we are registering on the ground, in the water, at the airports and stuff like that. So I could show you guys that there was an inconsistency here and where there's an inconsistency, there's an error. There's either an error or somebody's not telling the truth. Now, when it comes time to channels like this, this guy, okay, there is always a huge risk that if I refer you to a channel like this, what you're going to do is encounter controlled opposition. And then in that instance, all I would be doing is serving the enemy for disinformation. So even if this guy has very good information, if some of it is, is specifically geared towards that Cass Sunstein information czar propaganda arm of whatever agency or government or large corporation exists out there that admittedly by their own admission in published research they say that they have actually got people in the comments section of things like YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that to steer and socially engineer people's opinions then all I'd be doing is pushing you guys and working for free for the controlled opposition which I don't want to do so let me just share with you some of my concerns about this topic in general because I do have concerns and I, I'm, I'm having a hard time articulating them but I want to bring it back to the Bible. In the Bible we are told that there will be lying signs and wonders, okay, that that the Antichrist system, that the prince of the power of the air um, that works in the principalities that are governed by darkness, those that would be our world rulers, they are going to be able to pull off stuff that is going to convince people of great de deception, great deceivable ideas. And one of the th concerns that I have had all along in all my investigation into the actual equipment that we have around us, whether it's the 4G, 5G towers, or the ionosphere heaters, or the stratosphere aerosol injections that we call affectionately as chemtrails, one of the questions that I have had since the beginning is, will... God actually allow human beings to control the weather. Now, based on what I showed you guys last summer, and, and I don't know if those videos are still up. If they're not, I'll have to repost them. Based on what I showed you last summer, there was a huge campaign to get people to believe that these storms were actually happening when, in fact, there were storms, but they were nowhere near as bad as they were being reported. Now, there were some storms that were off the cliff bad, like the rainstorm that they had down in Texas. But I didn't report on that one. I started reporting on that series of hurricanes that came after that. And what they were telling us on the news was not consistent with what was actually being recorded at the airports, on, in the buoys, on, in the water, you know, at people's weather, personal weather stations. 
and it was nowhere near consistent with the damage that people in Marco Island and those other areas along the coast there had actually experienced. You know, the wind speed indicator said that those storms were 30, 40 miles an hour. The, the news reports were saying that they were 150 miles an hour. The people down in Marco Island and down in Sanibel Island were saying, yeah, it looked like, you know, the, the wind storms were around 60 miles an hour, which is what the wind speed indicator said. So what was the motive? What was the motive for them to grossly exaggerate the metrics about these particular storms? In one of my final reports from last summer, you'll see that I compare a CNN video where the guy is actually saying, you know, yeah, you can't see this hurricane on radar and the wind speeds don't indicate that the, that the hurricane's there, but we trust the National Hurricane Center, don't we? You know, so there's been this, there's been this push to get people to believe in these big, quote unquote, you know, mass weather events where although we have some images of them, some are very dramatic images, a lot of the data that is actually measuring the damage isn't consistent with it. And then we have these weird anomalies like the, like the fires in California, which are very hard to explain because they were very weird fires, right? So the point I'm making here is that it's very hard for us to decipher where the power of man ends and the power of the prince of the air begins. And what I mean by that is, since we already know that the prince of the power of the air is going to produce deceptive signs and wonders for people, I can't help but wonder, when I watch the news reports about how bad these hurricanes were, and I look at the actual results of the data and the metrics of the instruments that are measuring that really bad storm, and I see that there's this huge conflict between the two sets of, of information, I can't help but wonder if this stuff is actually true at all. I mean, if you've done any research into the NASA moon landings, you, you realize that there is a lot of misinformation out there by some very large um, institutions that we hope to be quite credible. So when I come across a channel like Jim Lee, I'm very, very skeptical because I don't know what the agenda is here and I don't want to mislead you guys. However, I do see that what this guy has is a wealth of information that is all consolidated into one particular place that whether or not these transmitting sites and these laser directed energies and this next red stuff actually does what they say it can do, or if this is just Satan working from the sky and screwing us all up, I don't know. But it is all compiled into one place. Now, one of the things that really... Um, really troubled me about Jim in the very beginning was after I had done all this research in 2011 to 2012 and I came across his channel when I was investigating Hurricane Sandy, the, the, the thing that struck me immediately was how can one person who doesn't claim to be an insider possibly have access to all the information that he had on his channel and the time to literally map all of these data points to Google Earth. I can't imagine how one person possibly did this. So my first instinct was that this guy is in some manner controlled opposition. I can't, I mean, I don't care if you spent your whole life digging up this information after I had just done a year and a half worth of hardcore research into the subject matter of trees and ELFs or, or yeah, electronic, electromagnetic frequencies, um, EMS. I could not possibly conceive of how one person could have the time to do all of this research, not being an insider, just from his mobile home house, and, and provide all of this information. Now, here's the thing. Is the information he's providing accurate? Yes, it does appear to be accurate. From what I've gleaned and, and cross-referenced to, like, for example, the ELF and VLF transmission sites, he has these all pinpointed on Google Earth. Now, how he had the time to do this? I don't know, because at the same time that he was mapping all the stuff to Google Earth, he was also posting PDFs um, of, of climate engineering uh, conferences. He was, he was exposing different um, agendas that were unfolding with different uh, you know, military exercises. He, he goes into so much information that I, I still, to this day, I can't comprehend how Jim Lee does what he does. I mean, this, is, this would take a lifetime to compile and yet here it is so take the information that he gives us with a grain of salt and question when I send you over to his channel to look at the things that he offers 
question what the agenda would be if this is controlled opposition. I mean, he does not profess to be a Christian. And that is one telltale marker that after about five or six years, if a truther doesn't actually come to some recognition of the veracity of Scripture somewhere, there's, in my opinion, and what the Bible tells us, is that there's, there's a gap, there's something missing there, that you either come to love the truth or you will be deceived by a lie. So this guy doesn't claim to be a Christian. We know that he is susceptible to loving a lie because that is the penalty for rejecting the truth. Now, God's, God's path that he will lead people on to get to the truth can take a very, very, very long time. So he may be on his journey to come to knowledge of the truth and be a confessor of the truth of the scripture eventually. And he may not be there yet, which is fine. It doesn't mean that everything that somebody has to say because they don't believe the Bible is wrong. I'm not saying that at all. There's a long journey to come to a knowledge of the truth and a full acceptance of Jesus Christ, right? And there are a lot of people who are accurate about a lot of things that don't know anything about the Bible or Jesus Christ. However, we are told in the scripture that there is going to come a day when there is going to be a beast system that literally governs the minds of men because men are going to be deceived by the lying signs and wonders. And I don't know where that line is between what man can actually do to manipulate the weather and what man claims to be able to do to manipulate the weather. So it's possible that this guy could be operating on either side of this equation. However, again, because the information that he has is so voluminous and mapped in such great detail, and I'm going to take you, oh, I'm going to walk you through the sample video here to show you how he reasons through things with vettable information. I'm going to say, I think we should keep this guy's channel um, on our, you know, on our own radars, no pun intended, just to, just to listen to the things that he has to say because the information he's providing is accurate. And I'm going to give you this example here. Okay, apparently in February 8th, 2018, a series of trees snapped in northern Washington. Now what he does is he tackles the the account that the Weather Channel gives that it was some mysterious meteorological um, event. All right, that's what the National Weather Channel says. But what he does is he says, no, it was not an, a, a, a mysterious event. It, he goes through and he shows the NASA images which show that the frequencies that were in the area at the time actually revealed that there was some heavy EMF um, frequencies pummeling the particular region on the day that those trees snapped. And then he cracks through this research where he demonstrates that the U.S. government had, um, for several years beforehand, established uh, this military campaign to test um, electromagnetic warfare in Olympic National Forest. He goes through and he pulls up the PDF that was published by, you know, the Navy, um, in their pro in their proposal, their public disclosure proposal, um, you know the the Navy and the Air Force and stuff like that. Then we'll, they will give their proposals to do these certain agendas. And if the people in the area do not respond within a particular period of time to object to these test sites, these tests will go forward. So anyway, he goes through and he shows the equipment that was in the area at the time. He establishes the different kinds of equipment that the military actually uses for these particular purposes in this particular area where these trees actually busted up. And he talks about ionosphere heaters, how they, how the Air Force actually has these microwave ionosphere reconfiguration ground-based emitters, or Mirage, on these trucks and trailers. And they're literally Air Force aims for weather control. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if the Air Force can actually do this. I don't know if microwave ionosphere reconfiguration ground-based emitters actually do the things that they claim. I don't believe that NASA astronaut suits can protect a man in a zero um, you know, atmosphere vacuum of space. I do not believe that that's possible. I think that we are being lied to about many things, that we are told that we have technologies that we don't have. For example, I don't think that the Higgs boson uh, CERN particle collider is actually going to recreate the Big Bang because I don't believe there ever was a Big Bang. I think that there are seriously large volumes of dollars and, and euros being pumped into a deception. So whether or not microwave ionosphere reconfiguration ground-based emitters can actually do the things that we see from that Alabama portal, you know, that people are spreading on YouTube, I don't know if that's what caused it. 
I do know that the prince of the power of the air, you guys, is going to cause lots of great signs and wonders to occur and in the skies are going to be shaken. Now, whether or not that's going to be Satan himself or it's going to be the actual instruments that we use to do it on our own, I can't tell where Satan's work picks up and man's work starts and vice versa. I don't know. So all I can tell you is that this guy, Jim Lee, provides links to very well-researched and very well-documented sources of information. I don't know if the sources of information are actually telling the truth. He uses resources like NASA, and it's hard to tell when NASA is telling the truth and NASA isn't. Like I said, I don't believe that an astronaut suit of, made of mylar or whatever that stupid material is is going to keep somebody safe in a vacuum, the vacuum of outer space. See, I see, to me, that's absurd. But these are, the, these are the resources that we have out there. And since he points to those resources, you're just going to have to vet them yourself. You know, whether or not microwave ion sphere reconfiguration ground-based emitters can actually do the things that he's attributing to them, I don't know. But this is about the only place you're going to get the vocabulary words that do distinguish between, you know, talking to your neighbors about this vague conspiracy of chemtrails and actually being able to talk to your neighbors about, you know, atmosphere aerosol injections. All right. Now, whether or not those are demonic, I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of people present arguments that there's beyond what these electromagnetic transmitters are doing and beyond what's actually coming out of the back of the airplanes, there is a spiritual element to this. And I can't deny it because the Bible says that this is going to happen. Now, whether this is the manifestation of what Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24, I don't know. But since this guy actually is connecting the dots to real research, real journals, real published stuff that the army and the Navy are actually doing, whether they're doing it on warfare for Satan or whether they're doing it with actual equipment, you guys are going to have to decide for yourself. But I thought I would share this channel with you, tell you guys, use discernment when you go here. I, I can't imagine how one human being could possibly have comp compiled all this information, you know, to uh, to link everything to Google Earth, this whole thing just seems to me to be well beyond the scope of one man's corpus of work for an entire lifetime. So I am dubious about this, the you know the character behind this. I don't know if this guy is who he says he is. I can't imagine how one person could have possibly done all this stuff. However, since he does connect the vocabulary to the things that we are observing, it's at least a resource worth telling you exists. All right, so hopefully you guys will continue to use discernment and use God's word as a measure for what is true in testing the things that we're told about everything. So I thought I'd give you this link, let you guys start checking out his channel. He does have tons and tons of videos that seem to explain what is happening here in terms of the electromagnetic frequencies and the actual equipment that the government is using. And it seems... It seems reasonable, but at the same time, I also know that the agencies from where he's getting this information are agencies of men, and those are governed by the prince of the power of the air. So use the information wisely and um, share your, tell me what you guys think about this stuff, because I, it's hard for me to wrap my head around everything that we, we have here. So I'm curious to get your feedback.